session. Um, as we'll share our screen with all of our guests. I just wanna, of course, welcome everybody to today. If you're here for the bold info session and you're an aspiring young entrepreneur from Bosnia and Herzegovina, this is the right place. Um, what we hope to do today is briefly introduce you further to the fellowship itself, provide a little bit more clarifications on the application process, um, and of course, leave some time for any questions from our audience and interest, interested candidates. Before we jump into any of the details, um, I just want to do a short round of introduction on the people who will be speaking today. Um, first person on my screen below me is Courtney. So Courtney, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Oh, hello, everybody. My name is Courtney Dogger, and I'm the president of Network 2020, which is the implementing organization for the Bold Fellowship in Entrepreneurship. Thank you, Courtney. Holly, you're on next. Hi, everyone. My name is Holly Zardes. I am currently the cultural attache for the U.S. Embassy in Belgrade, Serbia. I used to be the cultural attache in Sarajevo, and I helped to launch Bold when it started. So I'm here to answer any questions about that. Thank you, Holly. Cassandra. Good afternoon. I'm Cassandra Diviak, and I'm currently the cultural attache here in Sarajevo. Um, I got to work with Holly, but now that she's not here, I get to run bowls. And so I get to see what I want with it now that she's not in charge. Thanks. Thank you so much, Cassandra. So we'll just start with a brief introduction to Network 2020. So Courtney, I'll turn the, the mic over to you. Great, thanks. And, and I should have mentioned, I used to be the cultural attache in Turkmenistan, so I'm very excited that I get to work on these kinds of programs, but just from the other side. So I think that um, all the work that the embassies do is amazing, and I'm thrilled just to be able to participate it participate in it from, um, from this standpoint. So Network 2020, we're a New York-based organization, and we're, um, we're an inclusive international community, and we're really trying to bridge the gap between the private sector and the foreign policy community. And so we run a number of different programs um, we're, that are really trying to highlight and drive innovative solutions to foreign policy challenges. So on one set we have, and Philip, if you want to go to the next slide, we can, we can kind of zoom through these. Um, we have some educational programs where we're really trying to bring foreign policy experts to our wider audience, which is largely comprised of foreign pol uh, of private sector professionals from anything from finance and banking to consulting and law, um, and it really runs the gamut. So, so when we run a virtual briefing series, we run discussion groups and things like that. And then on the other side, we also run programs. Um, we run our entrepreneurial diplomacy program, which is our qualitative research program. And so the, our, our interest in working with the embassy to begin with was an outgrowth of a project that we did in Southeast Europe and uh, research that we did in Bosnia in 2016. And so we took a group of private sector professionals to the region and we were able to talk to such a wide range of people and we really learned about some of the challenges and opportunities and that's where we really saw um, just how powerful entrepreneurship could be as a tool. And so we really wanted to be able to, to then apply our network to work um, with people in Bosnia to help advance that. And so that's, that, that's why we were able to connect with the embassy for the Bold Fellowship. Um, and it's something that we're, we're super excited about. And so I think I will stop there because we wanna talk more about the fellowship itself. So back to you, Philip. Thank you, Courtney. Uh, Holly, Cassandra, on to you. Okay, great. Um, I think I'll jump in and talk a little bit about how this whole thing started. Um, and it, it starts with me because uh, I had worked on a program similar to this in another part of the world, and I'd never been to Southeast Europe. So when I got assigned to Bosnia and Herzegovina, they gave us a, they gave us a bunch of training, right? They tell us all about the country and teach us the language. And in that training, I heard all this stuff about Bosnia and Herzegovina that they're all the young people are leaving, and that the economy is really tough, and the political situation is gridlock. I mean, I heard all of the things that just were like, wow, okay. There are a lot of problems and I wonder how we can go forward. 
And then I showed up in Sarajevo and started meeting people all over the country. And I met these amazing young people all over who wanted to stay and wanted to try to start something new, whether it was a business or try to make a difference in their community. And so I had worked on a program like this in the country of Indonesia. And I, I met all these young people in Bosnia and they, the two just went together. I just thought, wow, I know how to do something that can inspire young leaders. And I see all this potential for leadership all over the country of Bosnia and Herzegovina. So I had to sell it. I had to sell this idea inside the embassy and say that we should do this thing. But then I also had to sell it to all of you, <laughs> like we're doing today, right? I had to tell people that this is something that's good for the country. And what I'll tell you is in Indonesia, uh, the program was meant for the whole region, for 10 different countries. And the idea was to you know, support young leaders, people who wanted to lead into the future. But it's hard to get people to operate you know, in 10 different countries. Like, what does it mean to lead that region? Like, that's complicated. But in Bosnia, it's one country. And so I thought, wow, this is perfect. Bosnia and Herzegovina is really in need of good leadership for the next generation. And it's young people your age, people who are interested in the idea of leadership. Even if you don't exactly know what that means to you, it's your generation that's going to bring the country into the future. And so I thought in some ways, bold program is even more appropriate to just the one country of Bosnia and Herzegovina. So uh, I transplanted a program and we created it and, and made it specific for your country. And guess what? We're going to try to do it here in Serbia too. Um, inspired by all the young people who have joined in BIH and who are working on projects and are trying to make a difference in their communities. Um, I, and I want to say, I don't know if Cassandra wants to jump in at any point, but um, one thing that's specific about this, when we talk about leadership, a lot of people say, well, you know, what, what do you mean? And it is true, there can be, you know, bad leadership. <laughs> so we're not, we're not looking for that, we're looking for good leadership. And that's a lot of different ways to do that, but I think one sure way of ensuring good leadership is through community-based leadership, right? A leader is someone who doesn't think about themselves, but thinks about the people that they are leading. So to get that experience, we are encouraging you through Bold to get involved with the community, to make something new happen, and to learn the lessons in that process. Learn the lessons of, of failure sometimes, and then the successes that come after failure, um, and, and figuring out how to get people to believe in what you believe in and to try to make something better. So that's how the idea started, and that's where we hope it goes. I would just add a little bit that, um, you know, the priorities for the U.S. Embassy regarding the BOLD initiative, that's, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, our priorities are that we establish something that takes on its own life, right? So Network 2020, Network is a keyword for the BOLD, the BOLD initiative, right, as we're calling it. We want people to work together and to support each other. And also we recognize that um, we shouldn't be driving the ship. We should not be making all the decisions about what future leaders of this country look like and what they do and what they find valuable and even what they need. We have some ideas and we've created the program with certain ideas in mind, but we are also very open and in fact expect that our bold program participants will come to us and say, you know, this is great, but maybe we need more of this, or we don't need so much of this, let's try something new. And we want to respond to that. We're obviously limited in some ways. We couldn't just do anything we wanted. We have regulations from, from the State Department and we have budgetary restrictions, but we want to um, maintain a flexible, malleable program that we can shape to the needs of the community. Um, and so the long-term objectives of this program are that we help establish this group of people that find in each other support, ideas, um, reinforcements. I think sometimes we hear a lot that even just being able to um, share your experiences with someone who also has this desire to make their community a better place, it can be helpful. Um, so I think Holly touched on something I wanted to say, and that is um, there is a lot of risk 
in, in some of the things that we do and that's okay and failure is okay. And I think culturally that's one thing I see that um, maybe is less talked about here in Bosnia and Herzegovina than, than in some other places that I've lived and worked that when you are trying to become a leader or trying to do something new or trying to do something amazing, you will fail sometimes. And that's great because then we can learn and, and you know, reshape your approach or change your plan based on that failure and what you learn from it. So that's one of the um, first lessons that I think everyone in life needs to learn. And some of us are learning it through bold and some of us are learning it other ways. Um, but I'll leave that there so we have more time for questions. Thank you, Cassandra. Thank you, Holly. You'll definitely hear some of the, the points that Holly and Cassandra made throughout the kind of slides that we go through. Um, what we'll try to do is we'll Next, try to talk about um, what the bold program is um, specifically. So, if you think about any kind of learning experience, um, the bold fellowship is not necessarily you in a classroom learning and with the end goal of being quizzed. It's more of a combination between uh, practical and academic knowledge, where the objective for us is for you to actually implement that experience, newly gain knowledge and network and mentors into creating something in Bosnia and Herzegovina. So our goal is to help you, to support you in developing a, a venture or actually growing that business idea into something tangible that you can showcase for not only for your own personal track record, but also to inspire others uh, and other young leaders in Bosnia and Herzegovina. So the kind of main three objectives of the fellowship is, is really kind of the development of the practical leadership experience, um, creating that meaningful engagement opportunities between whether it's mentors, diaspora members, uh, leading entrepreneurs from the United States, where you in, let's say, six months or 12 months might be able to kind of revert back to some of these individuals, then to help you uh, open up another door or help you build out a stronger business model or help you build out a completely new business model. Um, and lastly, really think about how that newly acquired knowledge can help you get from point A to point B. Um, is it's really about creating that meaningful experience that you can implement in your business. Um, when it comes to the three main components of the Bold Fellowship, we have um, a virtual component, which is about a month in length, where we ask our fellows to commit approximately three hours per week. Um, the second component is while our fellows will spend about a month in New York State between Buffalo and New York City. This is a very intense period, so it's it's kind of a full full hands on on board, um, a full commitment. Of course, uh, there will be free time for you to explore, and there will be cultural sightseeing, but it's going to be very intense in terms of the different activities, workshops, lectures, etc. Um, the last component of the Bull Fellowship focuses on when you return to Bosnia and Herzegovina. So it's approximately four months in duration very flexible commitment. Um, and what does that actually mean? And what happens after the expiration of these four months? You will remain a bold fellow for life, um, where our goal is to create uh, a foundation of future leaders that in six months or in 10 years, will be those that can inspire others to do great things, whether it's in on their academic or professional level. It's really about um, trying to develop your ideas into something tangible. So within these four months, we will support you with both the knowledge, mentorship, it's any type of business consultation you might need to be able to launch uh, a venture. And as Cassandra mentioned, there will definitely be a lot of the fellows that will kind of face a wall or fail or will not be able to launch this venture or will just simply be tired in dealing with a lot of the different obstacles that exist currently in Bosnia and Herzegovina. These are the experiences that we also hope to use to inspire our future generation leaders of, of bold fellows. Um, and it's really our fellows who can identify those obstacles um, and say, these are actually the opportunities that I hope to utilize and create positive change within my community in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, the the long-term objectives really kind of echoes what uh, Cassandra was uh, talking about when she was referring to the network. Uh, the, objective of the BOLD program is, is really to create um, these group of young people that can inspire other people, not necessarily only BOLD fellows and future BOLD fellows, but other young people within your community, and ultimately um, become a positive role model. We, we, we notice the necessity for whether it's individuals who are entrepreneurs, 
or who exist within the entrepreneurial ecosystem. The lack of positive examples of someone who can actually relate to what they have been through. And that's our goal, is to be able to provide opportunities where we can connect people with diaspora members, people that have been through a lot, uh, people that can relate some of their experiences, whether it's a positive or negative experience in trying to launch a startup in Bosnia and Herzegovina, or, or whether it's um, the issue of, of fundraising, or whether it's the issue of dealing with the various administrative obstacles. Our goal is really to try to empower the next generation of positive leaders to create something tangible within society. So a little bit more about the application. Um, these are the three main, um, if I can say, eligibility points. Uh, you have to be or either a current or recent uh, graduate um, between the ages of 18 to 25. You have to be a citizen of Bosnia to go in, uh, which means you have to have a a valid passport. Uh, of course, in order to be able to travel to the United States, you also need a passport. Uh, and then lastly, you have to uh, reside in Bosnia. So in a, uh, if in case you might be part of, let's say, an academic or professional exchange that is of one, two months in duration, um, that is okay. But the most important point is that you can demonstrate that you actually reside in Bosnia. I have to enough for them. Um, a little bit more about who and what is the type of candidate that we're looking for. Um, I definitely have to say that these five points are not exclusive, which means that you do not need to check off each single uh, point of what you see in front of yourself. Um, we always try to identify individuals who have either a business idea or that they want to create something, or are simply just aspiring individuals who want to use entrepreneurship, want to learn that can use this experience to be able to grow their idea to be yet materialized into something in the future. Um, I would say that the positive foundation for us is this kind of idea of individuals who want to create positive change. Um, and, and that's the kind of premise. It's leaders, positive change within their community. And of course, change takes time. So we're not expecting anybody to um, swoop in and build a, a huge venture or build a company or hire tens of people within a period of several months. It's about really understanding that that change takes time and really kind of devoting all of your attention to this idea and trying to be this positive role model. Um, obviously, the I would say that one of the advantages uh, of our ideal candidates are individuals who um, are current um, graduate students. We have had individuals who have decided not to apply for college, um, but have completed their high school degree and that are currently actively pursuing and developing their startup. Um, those are also valid um, proposals in terms of candidates who want to apply for the Bull Fellowship. Um, these are just five kind of main points. And again, you do not need to check off on all of the single points in order to be uh, eligible for the Bull Fellowship. Um, what does this application process actually look like? Um, I think the most important thing is to mention that the application window is currently open. You can apply for the 2022 cohort um, until February 4th. I know that seems kind of a long way in advance, uh, but I would definitely recommend that you start uh, checking out the application details. You have the link here, uh, we'll share it in our chat. Um, and it's, it's really a process where Network 2020 um, has developed this assessment and criteria tools that we look at each individual um, as this kind of unique persona where we try to assess not only your academic or professional background, but also your personal background. Um, I think it's important to mention that we look at uh, a variety of different uh, aspects when it comes to the application process. Um, Two of them are, for example, uh, short essays that we request that our candidates uh, complete and write. These are essays that we basically try to identify individuals who can relate how their experience um, really relates to the Bull Fellowship and how the Bull Fellowship really further um, help them get to the point where they want to be in the future. Um, and again, if you're interested in applying, we're going to share the application link in our chat box so you can click and apply today. Uh, of course, take your time. There's also uh, a letter of recommendation that we ask our candidates to submit um, and the, the application process is very straightforward. As always, I mean, you definitely can reach out to our offices for any assistance in terms of completing the application process. Now, the, kind of the big questions uh, when it comes to what the fellowship includes and what the fellowship does not include. Um, the 
main premise, of course, is traveling to the United States and international airfare is covered. Um, throughout your duration in the United States, every ground transportation as a group uh, will force covering, um, whether that, for example, includes uh, a train ride from New York City to Buffalo um, that will be covered, um, provide US visas. Um, there's several candidates who have already demonstrated that they have uh, existing visas, uh, which might be applicable for the visas that we will be using for traveling. So that's something we can uh, try to discuss at the point when you apply. Um, you know, this has been a big question from some of the candidates um, in terms of health insurance, um, especially due to the ongoing pandemic. Um, so our main goal is to not only provide the best experience in terms of the actual content, but it's also uh, the most important is to provide a safe experience where all of our candidates will um, have a safe environment to be able to pursue this uh, opportunity and, and, and have an equal chance to engage with a variety of different individuals across, whether it's in Buffalo or in New York City. Um, lodging and meals, um, very straightforward activities, workshops, event participation, whether that's different conferences, um, events, or whether that's uh, lectures, um, that will also be included as part of the fellowship. Um, what the fellowship does not include, um, for example, if you decide to go and buy a I Love New York shirt, that's not going to be included in, in what the fellowship covers. Um, if you really want to try out all the different hamburgers in New York City, we'll try to make our best and, and take you to one of the best hamburger places in the city, but the, the rest will probably be on you if you want to try to do that all in one day. Um, then I think this is a good way. How can we can demonstrate what uh, one of the days between the three main components look like? Um, our, our premise of the virtual program is, is really to try to onboard our fellows with uh, initial learnings about where their business ideas are and what are the phases of development for us to better understand. We also onboard our fellows to our custom developed uh, platform where we engage in various learning opportunities. It's also a good uh, opportunity for our fellows to get a better sense on what some of the different, whether it's the itinerary, the travel itinerary, but also for our fellows to do some research in terms of the different uh, whether it's companies or mentors that they would like to meet with. Um, and then moving on to the second uh, component, which is the United States travel piece. Uh, there's definitely going to be, as we mentioned already, a, a brief, I can take a comparative point where you will be able to go for a tour in an incubation hub, but also have various learning opportunities that focus on specific card skills, whether it's focusing on how to develop uh, a financial model or whether it's a uh, salary segment uh, for your business idea or even getting uh, closer to your MVP. Um, this, the last part, is, which, is, which already was mentioned, is the kind of part when you get back to Buzz and it's going up. I think this is the point where we ask our fellows to take a step back and, and kind of process everything that they've experienced. And at this point, we will be supporting our fellows in terms of onboarding uh, with all of the different experiences for them to create somewhat of a reflection uh, material where they can try to summarize all of their experiences. It's also the point where we try to uh, work with our fellows and their mentors, try to help them lift their, whether it's a business idea that is already in um, kind of an ideation phase, or it's a business idea that already has an MVP. We try to use this opportunity and this period to help our those um, kind of lift off their ideas from the ground. Um, lastly, I think this is the best way to demonstrate what are some of our fellows look like and who the fellows are, is a short video um, demonstrating what some of our fellows from previous years, what their main drivers are behind applying for the fellowship, what their main goals are, and what their main um, expectations are for the fellowship. So hopefully you'll all be able to hear and see the video, um, and I'll stop talking. Philip. I'm 
Seeing that some people cannot hear the video. Okay, problem. Let's see if we can briefly fix that. If not, we can subsequently share the link to the video itself. Okay, everybody, give me 10 seconds. If we can't fix it, we'll just move on. Yes, unfortunately, it seems like we'll not be able to hear the audio because let me see if it does the trick. Okay, let's try to reshare and share. Thank you for the feedback. Thank you, everybody, for bearing with me. Hopefully this works. No, still nothing. Well, I'm sorry. Then um, I, I can kind of accuse Zoom of not working with me. Um, but we'll definitely share the link of the Bell Fellows with our participants. With that said, um, what we'll try to do right now, hopefully that works, is we can move to our to our Q&A section. So I do want to invite everybody, um, if you do have any questions, to type in your question to the Q&A box and we'll gladly answer them as they come in. Um, so I see one of the first questions we have is, um, I started five startups from which four failed. Now I'm running a successful business with Startup Studio Digical, uh, work for early stage startups through whole Europe and partner with them. Besides that, we empower startup systems to assist in Bosnia. Do you have some kind of support on existing businesses or its supporting team? Good question. Um, so what we'll try to do is, is try to give you somewhat of a two-part answer to that. Um, Old Fellowship does not just yet include seed funding that is incorporated to the support for our fellows. We are working on the opportunity to include somewhat of a seed fund that would support our fellows in terms of the development of their business ideas. Um, I do not know whether the whether you're in that seed funding phase. It seems like you're more in somewhat of a early stage or series A. Um, of course, one of the added values of the fellowship itself is that you'll be able to not only meet individuals who are, whether it's angel investors or VC companies, um, where you will be able to pursue various opportunities to support financially your company. Um, I, I do have to say that the main goal of the fellowship is not for you to go to the United States or take part of this fellowship and um, actively seek funding. Uh, of course, we will be supporting our fellows in working with whether it's their mentors um, in terms of trying to open doors towards any type of funding solutions that will help their business ideas off the ground. Again, um, if there is that opportunity, uh, it, it's really also important to mention that um, what we're trying to support is the development of a trust relationship between our fellows and any individual who is interested in whether it's financially supporting uh, the startup or the entrepreneur, him or herself. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, on to the second question. What are the most rigorous prerequisites for applying to the program? Uh, what do you value most? Is the concrete established idea for the business idea that much important? Could it be more ideas that are not that developed? Okay, so multiple questions. I'll try to take them um, one at a time. I, I one of the most um, important prerequisites for the program is for you to be able to understand that you are Part of this fellowship with an end goal of giving back to your community. Um, of course, the idea is for us to support you creating a tangible, whether it's a venture or a different startup. The goal is for you to become a role model for other young leaders from Bosnia and Herzegovina, whether bold fellows, future bold fellows, or other fellows, or other just simple entrepreneurs from the entire country of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, we see this as somewhat of um, Obviously, big question for individuals who are looking to 
leave the country. Our, our goal is to try to work with individuals who see the opportunities within Bosnia and Herzegovina and, and want to try to take advantage of the challenges, but see those challenges as various entrepreneurial opportunities. And that's really, in essence, what an entrepreneur is. They are the individuals that will identify what are some of the gaps in the existing market uh, where they can try to develop their idea, their business model, try to use it as a springboard towards um, growing, whether it's regionally or grow growing globally, uh, trying to take advantage of all of that local talent that exists in terms of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And I do want to invite the other speakers if, if there's any question or any anything you want to add, by all means, please feel free to jump in. Um, I will then move on to our second question. Um, can you give an example of a successful bold candidate who has launched a successful startup in Bosnia? So one of our current candidates um, has currently been going through um, an accelerator, uh, I would say a, a well-known European accelerator with the end goal of, um, I would say in the next few months, reaching that series A, which basically means um, that he is in a very serious fundraising uh, aspect. And, and he tries to really think about the Bolt Fellowship as an opportunity where he will be able to not only um, further develop his business idea, but also gain new mentors, expand his network, and, and really kind of use the fellowship opportunity to bring back that, all of that experience back to Bosnia and Herzegovina, for him to be able to become a role model for other individuals. Um, and, and I would say that we're very proud of how our fellows have been trying to also uh, maneuver within the challenges that, that COVID-19 pandemic has presented. Um, again, it, it's really important to, to emphasize that entrepreneurs are, are a unique kind of individuals that can really try to take advantage of all the different opportunities where, where people will see black, they will see all the different colors uh, of the world in order to make something uh, amazing of their business ideas. Um, and then your second question to that is, how many bold members go on to the trip? Good question. Um, so. We will have a cohort of 18 individuals um, traveling to the United States. Um, in terms of also the travel, while we're speaking of traveling, uh, we are anticipating that the 2022 cohort travels to the United States in September of 2022, which means that we'll have a group of 18, um, hopefully sometimes in September between uh, Buffalo and New York City. Great, on to our next question. Um, funding is not important to us. When I say support, I'm thinking about mentors, advisors, networking. Thank you for um, kind of pointing that out. And, and that's one aspect that we hear a lot of entrepreneurs um, mention in Bosnia and in particular, is that it's not necessarily the, the the lack or abundance of funding opportunities, but it's more of the experience and mentors. And, and mentors, when we say mentors, we actually mean hand-selected individuals that have a genuine interest in supporting you through their experiences, through their know-how and through their networks. Um, as, as the name itself uh, indicates, Network 2020, we are proud to be a global community of professionals um, across the world that, that vary from different private sector and public sector um, walks of life. And, and just being based in New York City, uh, which we like to consider to be the kind of financial capital of the world, um, it, it really provides an opportunity for our fellows to embrace that, uh, I would say, vibrant way of, of uh, the entrepreneurial ecosystem that exists in New York City. And also to try to take some of that um, energy back to Bosnia and Herzegovina, and, and whether it's implemented in your business idea, but also implemented in your community. If there's something that you learn from or working with the team or working with your peers, um, I, I think it's just a magnificent opportunity where we can try to connect, bridge the gap between Bosnia and Herzegovina and the United States. Um, I see a question here on what sectors are these mentors? So. One way that we like to think about um, Network 2020 and, and our uh, community members are if you can think about a cross section of all private sector leaders, whether it's people from finance, investment banking, uh, law, or whether it's health sciences, um, it, it really ranges. Um, and, and we're proud to say that we have 
individuals and, and different groups um, and, and institutional companies um, that are related to Network 2020. Again, where we try to think about how can those individuals, how can those different companies provide some type of experience or, or guidance towards creating something tangible in Boston and Suona. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what, I'll just jump in there just to, just to give you a little break, Philip, um, just to talk a little bit more about, about Network 2020 and, and the network that we have. Like Philip said, it is, it is a pretty wide ranging network. I think one of the things that make Network 2020 unique is that we do, um, you know, part of our greater network are individuals that come from all different backgrounds really and um and we're pretty well wired particularly in new york and so if there's a, a certain type of expertise or some sort of niche sector um we can usually go out and find it and so that 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 i think gives us a distinct advantage and so and it's something that we've found that our wider network is interested in getting involved too and so it's it's a it, it sort of helps with our with our two-way street of our mission and so um and so we can we can certainly find a range of mentors thank you courtney uh one of the following questions that i see is regarding the application process itself um if i do not get selected this year can i reapply next year um it's a great question and Definitely, definitely encourage you to apply for um, the fellowship itself next year. Uh, this is really an investment in your own future. So thinking about the different opportunities that one can create in the future are just amazing. We've already had um, individuals who are who, who basically said um, during this time, I, I'm still kind of fresh in college or my business idea is, is not there yet or I don't have an idea, even regarding Despite all of those, we still encourage you to apply. But just thinking about how this fellowship can really um, provide those different opportunities, whether it's this year or the following year, please follow whether it's our social media channels just to kind of stay um, up to date in terms of the development of, of future applications. Can I add to that, please, Huey? Of course, Cassandra. We have a number of programs open right now for applications. Some of them are exclusively for bold members and some are not. I would encourage people to apply more than one time for opportunities that interest them, but I would also encourage them to look at a variety of things. You could apply for our Community Colleges Initiative Program and for the Network 2020 Program and for a SUSE program if you meet the qualifications. Um, I think there's something about casting a wide net, right? There are different benefits to each of those opportunities, but I think it is also a good experience to go through the application process. They ask you, why are you interested in these programs? It, it helps you tell your story. It helps you figure out what you're looking for for yourself. And I think um, the interview process is also very, uh, it's just great practice for all of us to do things like that. So I encourage folks to, to try for everything. Um, just throw that out there. Thank you, Cassandra. Uh, one of our next questions is, um, what does a strong essay look like? Um, th that's a good question because that's one of the typical questions that we get during that last kind of week or two when, when people are busy applying. The most important recommendation or suggestion that we can give regarding the essay is for you not to necessarily tell your um, life story or experiences that you have been through. It's as if you can try to relate what your experiences have been and how this fellowship will help you get where you want to be down the line. Um, and, and that's really important. And it doesn't have to be professional experience. It can be whether your academic experience, it can also be your personal experience. And we've noticed that a lot of individuals, entrepreneurs are individuals that are also born. Um, it, it might happen that you have had a personal experience in your life that has really kind of I would say inspired you to become someone who can bring that positive change to your community. So that's that's a really good question. Um, our following question is, do people who have an existing idea have some kind of advantage compared to people who don't really have an idea right now, uh, but have a high level of willingness to acquire knowledge and skills in order to develop an idea during the fellowship? Um, because sometimes I is, is better to spend more time developing idea instead of presenting a bad idea during the interview. Um, thank you for that question. It's, it's really kind of um, funny when we have had the amazing opportunity to talk to so many different candidates in the past where the 
the actual business idea is not the prerequisite for you to be eligible for this fellowship, um, nor will it be somewhat of a negative mark on your application. It's, it's more about how you can demonstrate that you're interested in learning and becoming a leader and taking this experience and turning it into something positive that can inspire you to create something, bring some change. Um, and it's really about this experience, networking, and the mentors that you can try to bring within your own community um, to develop something tangible. And your business idea that you have right now, whether it's existing or whether it fails down the road, it's not necessarily just about this one experience. It's about building you out as a professional. You might have an amazing business idea in three years' time. And there might be just 1% of it that comes from the Bold Fellowship experience that we can say that's exactly what the goal and purpose of the fellowship is about. Um, great, okay, moving on to other questions. Does the application for the Bold um, Fellowship include online or live interviews? Um, so as part of the application process, all of our candidates will complete uh, the applications themselves, which are currently available on our website and we'll share them before the end of the um, actual info session. And if you do get selected, um, then you go to the second phase of the application process. The second phase of the application process includes uh, an online interview with members of Network 2020 staff. And that is an opportunity for you to really showcase yourself, um, of course, kind of that face-to-face, -face, virtual face-to-face -face experience where you can try to expand on everything that you have written in your application. Um, it's more about how you can relate to the fellowship itself, the, the experience, rather than um, somewhat repeating what you have already indicated in your application. Um, Moving on to the following question. What if our idea business does not succeed? This is the everlasting question that every entrepreneur asks him or herself um, in the process of taking that risky choice of endeavoring down that path. Um, we have noticed that, especially in Bosnia and Herzegovina, that concept of failure is something that is definitely not well taken. Um, if you fail with your endeavor, um, whether it's your friends or family or professors or just your society looks at you not in that positive way that um, someone who does fail and tries to do something better next time is in a much more developed um, ecosystem, entrepreneurial ecosystem. What our goal is, is to try to surround you with individuals that have failed, not failed once, failed multiple times. And, and what is it that you've learned from that failure? I would be um, extremely happy if you can say and be proud of that, the fact that you have failed, you have not succeeded. You really kind of ran into a wall that, that you can't find a way around it, where you can say, but I've learned from this experience. I know what I need to do in order to be better. And, and or even I know what I need to do in order to pass on my wisdom or my experience to someone else. So failing is an actual positive aspect that one can bring to the fail fellowship. And failure is going to be an aspect that we will be exposing our fellows to during their time in the United States, because it's such a fundamental aspect of being an entrepreneur or of being uh, or launching a startup or even having just kind of that business idea in the ideation phase. You might iterate your business idea hundreds of times before you actually come into the tangible phase of developing something that might have looked like out of day, but by the end of the road, it's going to be something completely different. So you have to be open-minded. You have to understand that it's a really kind of a growing and learning experience. Um, and this is exactly where the Bold Fellowship comes into play. It's we try to provide an experience that's going to change you for life in a positive, of course. Um, great. Our next question is big question how can the ongoing pandemic affect traveling to the united states um so this has been something that that we have been dealing with for the and as has everyone else dealing with for the past almost two years now um we in guidance with and recommendations from both the state department and um a wonderful team at the u.s embassy in sarajevo we our main goal is as we said 
the uh, well-being of our fellows during their time in the United States. So while the ongoing pandemic is still somewhat of a threat, especially to international travel and kind of the logistical and technical aspects of moving around, it also continues to be somewhat of a challenge for face-to-face -face, um, meetings. That said, we do see somewhat of a positive trend in terms of the, the, on the, the new strain, the Omicron strain. However, that is yet to be determined what the effect will be. So we have in plan travel um, in September of 2022. Um, however, we have contingency plans and of course ask our fellows to keep in mind that the, the, the pandemic is a disruptor. And as such, we have to adapt to the conditions that the pandemic will present at that given time. I would maybe just add one or two things there if I could. Uh, certainly the situation since the beginning of the pandemic has changed more times than we can count. Um, there was a travel ban for entry into the United States for 18 months. Um, currently, international travel is allowed for fully vaccinated individuals. I don't see that part of the requirement going away. Um, you know, certainly I think they're looking at whether or not, uh, I think they actually just changed testing requirements so that you have to test the day before you travel as opposed to three days before. We will continue, continue to monitor that. And of course, if we're talking about September of 2022, it could change 10 times between now and then. But um, I think for now, anyone who's thinking about travel, uh, understand that a passport, a visa, and a vaccination are non negotiable and then we'll talk about the details as travel might be, be, be closer to. Thank you, Cassandra. Um, one of the questions that I see and that I've also seen before is related to what does actually success look like? And I think that's a very important question when we think about um, not only about the objectives of the Bull Fellowship, but also about the value for anyone who is interested in applying for this program. Um, for us, success, um, especially when it comes to the measurable aspect, is for our fellows to be able to launch a venture, um, so to basically be able to launch their business idea off the ground, um, and whether that means being able to hire one or two people in the future, whether that means being able to fundraise uh, in the future, or even being able to scale across, whether it's your your city or your community or the country. These are some of the measurables that are related to in particular the entrepreneurial aspects that we look at startups in terms of success. When it comes to um, success to for a, on a personal level, I think it relates back to the, the answer that I gave um, previously. It really, I would say comes down to the fact that one individual who goes through this fellowship really feels that uh, he or she has collected this experience, this, um, this knowledge and these newly acquired networks and mentors that will allow them to move forward in life, not necessarily with just the current existing business idea, but in general allows them to become that factor for positive change. And what does that actually mean? It means that if in six months we will have um, a lecture or presentation for what the Bull Fellows are and, and have them part of a conference in Bosnia Herzegovina. We want to showcase what the Bull Fellows are about. We want you to become those role models. Um, so, so not only people that come from the private sector that have gone through various large, if we can say, um, international corporations, but individuals that have built their little startup and that are slowly chipping away. It really means that you'll be able to showcase not only the value of the fellowship, but how you were able to maximize this experience. Because at the end of the day, um, we might try to create uh, an amazing experience and, and try to introduce various aspects, but it comes down to the fellow, um, how he or she wants to take advantage of the different experiences, opportunities, and networks that we try to introduce throughout the fellowship. I would add one more note there too, if I could. Um, I've been working with international exchanges, academic, professional, and cultural for uh, 15 years or longer. And I've said it to high school kids. I've said it to, you know, Fulbright academic scholars and everyone in between that really an exchange program is just the beginning of an experience. And, and we as the US government don't invest in an exchange program just so you spend a month in New York. Um, really, I, if, 
Philip, you've done a great job highlighting it, but that is just really the beginning of what we'd like to see. And I think you've touched on it numerous times, including about success here, but um, just one small piece. Thank you, Cassandra. I think we don't have any more questions. Um, but of course, we are always available. You can always reach out to Network 2020, especially as you get the process of applying and, and kind of putting together all of your material for the application package. Um, we are excited about not only um, having an opportunity to meet other eager entrepreneurs, but we're excited about really kind of taking you along this journey and having you create an amazing um, program for us because it's really us on the other side that are extremely, um, if I can say, delighted have the opportunity to work with young people like yourself. Um, with that said, if we don't have any other questions or if any of our speakers want to add something for the end. No? Yeah, I'll just Probably jump in. As a, as a person who was here at the beginning of this whole thing and now I've moved on to another country, I can just say I'm delighted to hear your questions. I wish I could say I'm delighted to meet you, but we're not actually meeting. Um, but I want to just say it's so great that you're here asking these questions and thinking about what you want to do in the future, because this is all about the future. It's the start and then you move on and you're part of a network that's growing and you can get support from people within the network. You're in the network now, even if you don't go on this, this exchange, you're part of this whole movement to improve leadership in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And, do, and, and lead from a community perspective. It's what the country needs for the future and you all are the ones who know how to do it and how to tell us what you need to do it right. And so um, please continue doing what you're doing and, and put your whole heart into it. Thanks. Philip, if, if people have any further questions, how would they, how would they connect? What's the best way for them to do that? We can, so within the link that we just shared, there's contact information at the bottom of the page. So you can always reach out to us easily. We're always available for any questions. Um, thank you, Courtney, for that question. Um, with that said, I think we have uh, answered all of our questions. I wish you good luck with applying. Um, and of course, we look forward to the next step and trying to, um, of course, look at your applications and, and hopefully um, see you during our interviews. Um, once again, thank you all so much for your interest in the Bold Fellowship and, of course, for everybody for joining today. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye, everybody. Take care.